Hi, welcome to the Circles Part 1, Lesson 5. We're going to focus on chords and the theorems. Okay, the first theorem we're going to look at is this one. Theorem number 1, and this is on your note-taking guide. In the same circle or congruent circles, because they would match up, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their cor corresponding chords are congruent. Okay, that means two things, okay? Here is a picture of the actual theorem. So you've got two chords that are marked congruent, A, B, and C, D are marked congruent. That means the arcs that are associated with those two chords, so the arc, C, D, would have the same measure as the arc, A, B. Even though they're not central angles, since those chords are congruent, it means their associated arcs are congruent. Now notice this if and only if. Well, when you use, if you think back to reasoning, if and only if, it means you can say it both directions. So the arcs are congruent if the chords are congruent, and the chords are congruent if the arcs are congruent. So you can know either piece of information and then deduct the opposite. So if you know the arcs, you can say the chords are congruent. If you know the chords, then you can say the arcs are congruent. Okay, so let's look at a couple of the practice problems here. Um, the first one says GH has a measure of 100. So this arc over here measures 100. What is the arc IJ? Well, that's very simple. It's just a basic concept. Congruent chords, congruent arcs. So the first one is IJ is 100. Pretty simple, okay? So let's look at the second one. The second one, we've got a little more information. Let me erase that, because we've got the same diagram, just different information. Okay, now we are gonna say JI is 55 degrees. Okay, well JI isn't the same as another one, another arc, because there's no congruent chord associated with it. And then HJ is 115. And we're supposed to figure out what GH is. Hmm. We know these two, but we don't know IJ. And we know, don't know J, GH, but we do know that these two arcs are congruent. So what we can do is take these two arcs that are given and add them together. So 115 plus 55. That gives us 170. Okay, so they take up 170 degrees of the 360. Now we know we have 360 degrees, so we can take that 170 and subtract it. 16 minus, so we have 190 degrees to split equally between these two arcs. So we're just going to divide that by 2, and each of these arcs measures 95. And so that's number two. 95 is the measure of GH. Okay, so let's look at the last scenario. So let's erase all this information from this one, same diagram. Now we're going to say IJ is 85. HJ is 120. And you've got to figure out GI. So this is our unknown, let's call it X for now. Okay, but we're missing two parts. But what do we know about GH? GH is gonna be the same as IJ. So I can come over here and mark that as 85. Then we know that all the angle, or all the arcs in a circle add up to 360. So let's take those and take 85 times two plus 120 that we were given. So we've used up 290 degrees. So let's take 360 and subtract 290. And that leaves us 70 degrees for IJ. So there we go. So now that's 70 degrees. And that's how you would do apply the first theorem on chords. Now, let's look at the second theorem. The second theorem actually goes with the third one. They are just basically saying op the opposite, given the opposite information. So once you understand one, you actually have both of them. Okay, in cor the chord theorem two says if one chord is perpendicular is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, 
then the first chord is a diameter. Hmm. Okay, so if you have a chord and it's cut in half it's, and it's perpendicular, then that means this other chord is a diameter. Now notice the diameter is not bisected, only the other chord. So let me demonstrate this for you with a little foldable. Okay, I've got a little piece of paper here. I'm going to fold and show you how that works. Okay, here is a circle. And circle K, and then we have this chord over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a perpendicular bisector by just taking the paper, and yeah, I've used this paper. I'm just recycling it. And I'm going to fold it in half so that the, my dots, this dot and this dot, line up. Okay, what I've created is a perpendicular bisector by folding it. So let me draw it in here. Okay, not the best drawing, but you can see I've drawn it in there. And look, it's perpendicular, and we know it's bisecting it, so it's cutting that cord in half, and lo and behold, the line that I folded it on, that line, actually does go through the center of the circle, so it would contain a diameter. So you can try this too and see if it works. Draw a circle, draw a cord anywhere, locate the center of the circle, and then just fold it in half, and you can you two can see that that actually does work. So I've demonstrated that theorem to show you kind of what we're saying. So it's pretty easy. If you've got a diameter, you're going to bisect this perpendicular and cut it in half. And then the second theorem actually says the same thing backwards. If a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to the chord, so if we have a diameter, and it's perpendicular, what can we tell about that other chord that is bisecting it? So in other words, this segment and this segment are then congruent, okay? And if these two are congruent, then the arcs associated with them are also congruent. Same up here. If we know we've got congruent arcs, then we can say we have congruent chords, and then we can say we have a diameter if it's also perpendicular, okay? So you have to have perpendicular, and you have to have bisecting, and then you'll have this theorem. Those are the two pieces of information you need to use this theorem. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Um, let's zoom out and look at a couple practice problems here. Okay, if ME is 35, and that's, or BE is 35, and that's labeled, find the measure of CB. Well, it's just this other arc, and I hope you can look in it and say, yeah, well, that's 35, so that arc's got to be 35 because the chords associated with them are the same length. Okay, how about um, DE? Okay, DE, hmm, how would we get DE? Well, we know BD is a diameter. How many degrees are in a semicircle? 180, so we're going to take 180, and we're going to subtract 35. That leaves us with 5 for 145. So that leaves 145 as this arc on this side. And what other arc do we know is the same as DE? I hope you can look at it and say, well, DC would be also 145. So just an extra extension there. Okay, let's look at this last picture. Solve for X. Okay, we do need one more piece of information here. We need to know that that goes through the center of this circle. If it goes through the center and it's perpendicular, what do we know about this chord? This chord right here is bisected. So these segments are going to be equal. So what algebraic expression can we set up? Well, if we know they're congruent, that just means equal. Let's set up two simple equations. 5x minus 4 equals 2x plus 9, and we get, what, 3x equals 13, so x is 13 thirds, and that's how we would solve for x, okay? So that's this first page.